Can you hear me? I'm a bit taller, so <laughs> I have to bend down. Um, so I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to share my research. And today I will be speaking about uh, my contribution to our lab's goal to understand the genetic basis of a trait that has repeatedly evolved on islands. Islands can serve as natural laboratories for the study of rapid evolution, and that's because islands uh, possess um, ecological characteristics that promote uh, the evolution of a suite of traits that have evolved in a wide array of taxa. These ecological features of islands include the fact that they're often well isolated, the fact that they're relatively small and therefore have a relatively uniform climate. Also, organisms that colonize islands uh, are often presented with new food sources. Additionally, island colonizing organisms um, are freed from mainland predation pred uh, pressures as well as ecological competitors. And as I stated before, this collection of ecological features promotes the evolution of a suite of traits commonly called the island syndrome. These traits include altered reproduction, increased docility, increased exploratory behavior, and one hallmark of the island syndrome is the evolution of extreme body size. One remarkable example of extreme body size evolution is found on Gough Island. Gough Island is one of the most remote islands in the world, located in the South Atlantic, and it is inhabited by the largest wild house mouse population on the planet. House mice arrived on Gough Island approximately 200 years ago via ships that were there to hunt aquatic mammals in the vicinity. And in that short time, as I mentioned, Gough Island mice evolved to be the largest wild house mice in the world. So this is just a comparison with the mainland strain, and you can see the size difference. Um, uh, because uh, a wide array of taxa evolve extreme body sizes on islands, we can use Gough Island mice as a model to understand the genet genetic mechanisms uh, underlying the evolution of this trait. Uh, I hypothesized that gene regulatory evolution in key metabolic organs uh, was a main contributor to the evolution of gigantism in Gough Island mice. And to address this hypothesis, we carried out RNA sequencing on transcripts collected from three key metabolic organs. The gonadal adipose depot, which I'll be referring to just as the adipose, the hypothalamus, and the liver. Uh, these three metabolic organs control systemic body growth, as well as the production and storage of lipids, glucose, and other metabolic determinants that are essential for mammalian body size development. As I mentioned, we collected transcripts from island mice and mainland mice so that we could look at significant differential expression between these two strains. We collected transcripts at a time point where growth divergence is at a maximum between these strains. And additionally, for the liver, I collected transcripts at two additional time points, but I'll return to that topic later in my presentation. Uh, across these conditions, we observed uh, several organ-wide or genome-wide genome patterns. Firstly, I want to mention that there was substantial gene expression evolution uh, between these strains. Between 20 and 40 percent of expressed genes were, different, were significantly differentially expressed. So as an example, there were 8,700 differentially expressed genes in the adipose, uh, as well as 4,000, that's the lowest amount, of significantly differentially expressed genes in the hypothalamus. Additionally, a little over half of these genes exhibited full changes of 1.5 or higher. We also noted that except for the hypothalamus and all of these conditions, there were significantly more upregulated than downregulated genes. Additionally, differentially expressed genes were significantly more likely to harbor fixed nucleotide differences in their upstream regions, suggesting that cis regulatory evolution played an important role in the divergence of gene expression between these strains in these particular metabolic organs. Now, these are genome-wide patterns, but of course we are also interested in organ-specific gene expression patterns that could teach us something about the physiological processes underlying gigantism in Gough Island mice. One way to do this is to look for significant enrichment of CAG pathway or gene ontology terms in specific down-regulated and up-regulated gene sets. I'm just going to give you two examples today of the numerous insights we're, uh, we're garnering about the biological processes underlying gigantism. Firstly, island adipose tissue had a significant enrichment for genes that were controlling cellular differentiation and also a significant downregulation of fatty acid mobilization pathways. This suggests that in island mice, the adipose is more differentiated or more mature than mainland adipose. However, it is not yet exporting fatty acids for energy use in other organs. Additionally, we observed this uh, remarkable prolonged period of growth and differentiation in Gough Island livers, and I'm going to go into a bit more detail about, about this observation. 
Uh, I mentioned to you earlier that we collected transcripts from three time points for the liver. So what I'm showing in this plot are transcript abundances for two genes, gene A and gene B, across three time points, embryonic day 16.5, two weeks, and four weeks. Of course, we have these transcript, we have these transcript abundances also for the Gough Island mice. And what you'll note is that these two genes share a temporal expression pattern. So that is gene A and gene B are, uh, their transcript levels are varying across time. Therefore, we can group these genes into potentially co-regulated gene sets, which I'm representing by these heat maps, where the uniformity of, uniformity of color in the columns just represents the shared temporal expression pattern of those genes. Uh, among about 6,100 genes that were identified in all three time points for the liver, we identified 66 potentially co-regulated gene groups, the largest of which contained about 200 genes, the smallest just one to two genes, and on average 30 genes were found in these uh, co-regulated gene sets. And I just want to go into detail for two of these groups uh, to, to, to share what we learned about uh, Gough Island livers. So I'm showing here information uh, about a group that I call Group 56. It had about 170 genes. Uh, this co-regulated gene set was significantly enriched for genes related to mitosis, cell cycle checkpoint, interaction between the kinetochore and microtubules, um, and then I'm just showing a few representative genes involved in these uh, pathways in gene ontology terms. And what you'll note is that from uh, embryonic day 16.5 to two weeks, the transcript, transcript abundances of genes in this gene set were slightly downregulated. However, from two weeks to four weeks, there's a relative upregulation of this gene set in Gough Island mice, suggesting that there's a prolonged period of uh, liver growth and expansion uh, in this latter part of the time points that we looked at. In uh, concordance with this observation, I can look at uh, other gene sets, in this case, group 50, which has about 40 genes and includes transcription factors like PPR gamma, uh, signaling pathway molecules, and signaling pathway inhibitors, such as WIF1. And you'll note that this gene set is enriched for uh, gene ontology terms related to differentiation and organ morphogenesis. And also, uh, as was similar with the, with the previous slide, you'll note that there's this relative upregulation of this gene set in Gough Island mice, suggesting that there's evidence for continued differentiation. So again, this is some of the evidence we've used to note that Gough Island livers are behaving differently, expanding and differentiating for a prolonged period relative to mainland mice. We also wanted to use our data set uh, uh, to nominate candidate genes that might be involved in the evolution of gigantism. So I've shown you uh, physiological patterns, but how might we use this data set to nominate candidate genes for further study? One way to do this is to take our data set and overlap it with other data sets that might bolster our nomination of candidate genes. As just one example, our lab previously identified 19 QTL related to Gough Island gigantism. Eight of these QTL regulated body weight, the other 11 regulated growth rate. So the idea would be to look for overlap between differentially expressed genes within the QTL. These would be our strongest nominated candidate genes involved in the evolution of body size. Additionally, we have genome sequences for Gough Island mice, and so we can look at proximal SNPs and ask, are the SNPs associated with these differentially expressed genes imputative regulatory elements to give us further insight into the role of these uh, genes in the evolution of gigantism? So, uh, Perform this overlap, we identified 149 differentially expressed genes that are within two mega base pairs of the QTL peaks. And then just to sort of parse these differentially expressed genes into two flavors for the purposes of this presentation, uh, we noted that 51 of these QTL differentially expressed genes contain fixed SNPs in their promoter regions, while 109 of these QTL differentially expressed genes contain fixed SNPs within their introns. And so I just want to take a moment and look a little bit closer at this data set and how we might use it again to bolster our nomination of candidate genes. So of the 149 QTL DE genes, 51 of them had promoters in their SNPs. And what I'm showing here is that nine of those SNP promoters also overlapped with a data set from mouse ENCODE for uh, histone marks associated with active transcription. As just another example, if we look at the SNPs that are associated with, uh, that are in introns of these QTLDE genes, 80 of these intronic SNPs overlapped with gonadal fat pad specific DNA's hypersensitivity sites, which are known to harbor transcription factor binding sites for gene regulation. We can also overlap these SNPs with data sets, for example, of highly conserved elements, such as the FASTCONS conserved elements taken from the UCSC genome browser. This is just a flavor of the um, uh, types of data sets we can, we can in, uh, overlap to identify uh, candidate genes. 
And so I just uh, want to bring all of this data sort of together and give you one example of a gene uh, that, that could be a, an important candidate. So we identified differenti differentially expressed genes in the adipose. One of these genes was a transcription factor called ARID5B. It's also located in the chromosome 10 QTL. And in island mice, its expression is one third of the expression in mainland mice. And we note that it has uh, uh, many SNPs, intronic SNPs, and some of these SNPs overlap with FASTCON's conserve elements, as well as adipose-specific DNA hypersensitivity sites, suggesting that these SNPs might uh, contribute to the differential regulation of these genes, of this gene, uh, between the island and mainland strain. Additionally, we know something about the role of this gene in the development of the adipose. So ARID5B is one of the genes most strongly correlated to obesity in humans and in mice. We know that it regulates uh, several downstream transcription factors which promote the maturation of adipose tissue and the ability of that adipose tissue, uh, adipose tissue to store um, lipids. So that's just one example of, 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 a, of a candidate gigantism gene. So just to summarize what I've uh, shared with you today, We've noted substantial gene expression evolution between Gough Island and mainland mice. Um, we've noted that there's greater differentiation and attenuation of fatty acid mobilization, specifically in Gough Island adipose. We've noted that Gough Island livers have a prolonged period of growth and differentiation. Also, I've showed you that differentially expressed genes do reside within QTL, and by combining them with different data sets, we can nominate uh, strong candidate genes and even candidate mutations that were involved in the evolution of gigantism. With that, uh, I'd like to thank those who made this research possible, including the opportunity to meet uh, with this community. I'd like to take any questions. Uh, I wonder, uh, did you find any evidence of uh, evolution of tumor suppressor uh, genes because of the body size, uh, the link between tumor suppression and body size in general? The question, did you, did you say tumor suppressor? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, actually, um, yes. Uh, one of the, the pathways that is uh, significantly regulated, for example, controls, uh, it, it involves P53 as just one example. So that would be just one classic and well-known example of, a, of a, a, a gene important for uh, tumor development. In the, in the back? Uh, have you considered uh, structural variants um, as candidate variants? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Have you, have you considered structural, structural variants as candidate variants in your genes? Like, for example, for that example, it could be a duplication or a TE insertion. Have you considered them as your candidate variants? Yeah, so the question was about structural variants. Did I, did I hear that right? Yeah? Is that? Yeah. Yes, OK, sorry, I, I, the, the, the rebounding of the sound. Uh, so no, we have not looked at structural variants yet. I, th I think that's an important avenue to go, but uh, uh, currently, not, not so. In the, in the front? Um, sorry, you may have said this, but are there changes in the skeletal morphology, or is most of this increased adipose tissue, the size uh, difference? Yeah, thanks for that question. So uh, a graduate student in the lab, Michelle Parmenter, specifically mapped QTL for skeletal structure differences, um, and there are numerous QTL, very interesting. She has a poster, which I think she'll be presenting today. So that's Michelle Parmenter, and I'll let her answer all of those good questions. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how, how easy is it to match uh, four-week mouse with four-week mouse? Are they the same mouse, or uh, one is giant? <laughs> one is giant. Yeah, so the, the matching of age for the mainland and, and island mice is, is, is specifically just by date of birth and so on and so forth. Um, and so, so uh, of course, if there's heterochronic differences in gene expression or in body size, we would capture that in the gene expression data, but it was simply based on a developmental time. Thank you.